imagine this. It's the end of a long day, just another typical run-of-the-mill Tuesday. You lay your head down to bed, finally, and this haunting thought keeps creeping up and whispering. Have I done enough today? Am I making the most of my life? What does this all even matter? What am I even doing? This fear, deeply woven into your heart, is what we are unraveling today. And the hustle of our everyday lives, amidst the chase for success and fulfillment, there's this lingering fear that shadows so many of us, the fear of wasting our precious life. As Christians, this fear is magnified by the desire to live in a way that not only brings joy into our lives, but also glory to God. It's so heavyweight. But how do we navigate this fear? We are going to dive into this today. Welcome to the Thought Vault Podcast, everyone. If you're new here, I'm Emily Vermillion. I'm a certified Christian life coach and entrepreneur. I'm so excited that you're here listening today. So make sure that you subscribe and follow and leave a review or comment in the notes below. So excited to have you on this journey. So we're going to talk about Sarah for a minute. And for those of you who are listening, instead of watching, I'm using air quotes because Sarah is you. It's me and anyone else who is scared about wasting our precious time. So Sarah, a 32-year-old Christian millennial, finds herself scrolling through social media feeds. Each post a reminder of what she hasn't achieved. She sees a person from high school who's killing it in her job with four kids and apparently a very romantic husband, and the other friend from her first job who left to become this global influencer, traveling all over the place, living what seems like a fairy tale of endless opportunity and fun. You know who I'm talking about, right? Like Sarah, many of us are caught in the web of comparison and societal expectations, leading to a paralyzing fear of not living up to our potential. In fact, a study shows that over 60% of millennials feel inadequate when comparing their achievements to those of their peers. That's from the Journal of Social and Clinical Psychology in 2019. Let's turn to the story of Mary and Martha in the Bible. In Luke chapter 10, verse 38 through 42, we hear that Martha was consumed with the busyness of serving, while Mary chose to sit at Jesus' feet, listening to what he said. Jesus commended Mary for choosing what was better. This story teaches us the importance of prioritizing our relationship with God over the busyness of life. How many of us need that reminder? It's not about how much we accomplish each day, but finding contentment and value in our relationship with God. As Christians, we are searching constantly, just like normal people, of what's going to fill us up, what's going to make us happy, what's going to give us that passion and excitement and drive for every day. That's just innate in us. It's because our heart has a yearning for the Lord. So many of us try to fill that hole with things that are of this world. But the true fulfillment that we can get is from our relationship with God. And that's what Jesus tries to explain when he commends Mary for choosing what was better. Paul's words in Philippians chapter 4, verse 11 through 13 resonate deeply with this concept. I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. We all know that verse. Contentment and strength in Christ are powerful antidotes to the fear of wasting our lives because we know that through Christ, we are able to conquer, to have power, to have the strength, to have the stamina, to have the endurance, to have a life that is full and filled with a lot. We all hear of the, dare I say, idolized view of the Proverbs 31 woman. In fact, I have an entire episode dedicated to this conversation. So I'll link that into the, into the description of this episode. But without going through the entire narrative, as a culture, we idolize the pursuit of material possession, whether it's money, homes, businesses, vehicles, clothes, all of it. But the Proverbs 31 woman shouldn't show us that we must hustle in every respect of life. It actually points to the woman's faith in God an ability to steward well what she is given at the time she is given the opportunity. So many of us feel like, oh, because that person has all that, they must be in favor of the Lord or God must be blessing them. They're doing something right. We hear all these cliche sayings, but the truth is someone might just be good at stewarding well what's given to them. What little is given may become big. What big is given may become small. Your journey is about drawing you near to God. So when you think about that in the context of all these material possessions, what are they doing to help your relationship with God? Or how are they hindering? So what is wasting our lives referring to? What is the perspective of actually wasting? The transformational power of faith and commitment in God's plan is our beacon of hope. Imagine if Sarah, instead of scrolling through social media, spent her evening reflecting on God's word, finding peace in the knowledge that her value isn't measured by worldly achievements, 
but by her faithfulness to God's calling, her relationship with him taking priority over the things of this world. How much time do we spend lamenting on what our flesh desires while the life we had to live now is happening all around us? Let me ask you, do you put off plans because you're waiting for your house to be a certain way or avoid seeing people because you are rife with jealousy when you're around them? The concept of wasting our life really comes from feeding a self-righteous ego that is trolling on your weakness to find joy and contentment in the present. But where else does this fear of wasting your life root? For some, it's the tendency to avoid what you have a gut feeling you should be doing. You're walking with guilt and shame, feeling like you could be doing more, probably because you can, but it would inconvenience life too much. Oh, that hurts. I've been there. You have a fear you're missing the boat, but not because of comparison, but because you're not heeding to the call that God has placed on your life. You're living in this life of excuses and putting things out of your mind so you can keep doing what you're doing, making no changes, grumbling the entire time, grumbling because you're not allowing God to lead your path, yet wringing your hands on why he isn't making it easier for you to do. Our lives are not measured by the standards of the world but by the depth of our relationship with Christ. And the truth is there is no way to waste your life if you are living by obedient faith, meaning you are dying to yourself each day and living for God first. You are seizing the time given for the place that you're in right now. You are stewarding well what has been given to you and you are seeking God's will above your own. That's a big one. When you do that, when you live by that measure, I promise you will sleep well knowing you put your best on the line. And whether that was wiping snotty noses and nurturing tears or closing a negotiation that's been in the works for months in order to bring massive change to your business, you claimed God the victor and sought his approval for the way in which you handled yourself. Reflect on your own life. Where are you seeking validation? Is it in your achievements or is it in your relationship with God? I want to make some suggestions for kickstarting some transformational changes in your heart and mind. I'm gonna call this the contentment challenge. Are you ready? First, digital detox. For one week, limit your social media usage. Instead, spend that time in prayer or reading your Bible. Both good options. Notice how this shifts your perspectives on your life and on your achievement and what you're looking at each day. I promise you it will be life-changing. Second, gratitude journal. Each night, write down three things that you're grateful for. Focus on the blessings God has given you rather than what you feel you are missing. Third, acts of service. Within the next two weeks, do something kind for someone else without expecting anything in return. Serving others can bring a sense of fulfillment and purpose that material achievement will never, never master. And fourth, scripture reflection. Meditate on 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6 and 7. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. Reflect on what contentment means to you as a Christian. Through these actions, let's embrace this journey of finding contentment in God's plan for our lives. Free ourselves from the chains of comparison and the fear of wasting our lives. We know that together with God, we are focused on him. We are achieving all we were meant to. Together, we can find joy in that every single day, knowing we're living exactly as we are meant to, stewarding well what God has given us and having eyes on him so that our actions, our feelings, our thoughts, and our, the reflections that we have in our life are a mirror of him and who he has made you to be. And with that, I want to leave you with our closing out verse, Romans chapter 12, verse two. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So live with bold intention today. Bye for now, everyone.